All right, so when I was asked to give an overview, I kind of summarize all that we have done. And remember, we started this pre-COVID. Please don't forget that. It's not because of COVID we jump up like other people. Right? <laughs> I had a vision in my mind, I had an image in my mind and I wanted to share it and I'm gonna explain why I had this image. I had the image of jet fighters. This is how I see Jamaica College moving forward, fighting together to make sure it's the number one school, make sure that the boys get the best in learning and teaching environment to make sure they get the best scores so they can go out and be the best citizens and leaders and heroes. That's how I see us. Now, you know when you have the planes up in the air, you must have air traffic control, right? You can't just go up there and start flying. There we have the trust, the foundation, the board, making sure we don't go up there and crash. They are controlling to make sure that we can succeed in what we are achieving. Who do you think is in the first plane there? Mr. Robinson, excellent leader, team leader, making sure everybody, the tight, tightness of the team, everybody bringing their skills, everybody is bringing what they can to the table to make sure that we succeed. When COVID came, we kind of changed formation a little bit, but we kept going, one vision, kept going forward. So we're off with a ban. Now, what fueled the actual jets? The old boys, the commitment of the old boys. And of course, the greatest fuel injection we got was Dr. Tate. <laughs> Allowing us to do so much. There was a thought process of having one building with everything STEM or STEAM. And after speaking with the teachers, meeting with the teachers, as Teddy explained, we had a group, we had many meetings, we got, in, we got educated as to what it really means to have an education environment, which is a STEAM environment. And we realized what we really needed was a STEAM infusion. We have infused steam throughout the campus. Every block can feel steam. Every subject can use steam. Every subject is supported with the steam infrastructure, products, and equipment that have been put in place. So as we saw, we must reach number one in all areas. We know we're number one in sports and these things, already, but we're getting there now with the academic. <laughs> so just to share some of the actual images of the areas that we have touched. So here we have the building that we are in, the steam labs. In here we have two labs. We're in one now and there's one upstairs. These were previously the physics, and the upstairs is the chemistry lab. There's another one on, on each side, so they were lab two. So this is physics lab two and chemistry lab two upstairs that was retrofitted. So here you see what it looked like as we started to move forward. And this is where we are now. now I don't want you to take anything for granted, you know. Storage space was one of the complaints that we had. We have ample storage. We have storage there and we have storage underneath there. That was one of the complaints that the teachers had. One of the teachers had a revolutionary idea of making those tables ones that the students can write on. So we are moving away from telling the children don't write on the table. But you say, okay, we have a solution. Let's everybody write their solution and their workings on the table, right on the table. That's something new. She actually had an experience that actually inspired her. There was an old whiteboard that was broken and there were pieces around and the boys started picking up the pieces and writing on it. And then she said, aha. And so she started to use it in her class, the little broken pieces. So when we were putting this together, she did not hesitate to say, 
if you can find a way to get this the, to be the norm in both of our STEM labs, try it. And when I went to the manufacturers, it was manufactured in Jamaica. When they went to the ma manufacturers, they said, I've never heard of that anywhere. They Googled it, they searched, they've never seen it anywhere. But they said, we're going to do it. And they did it. So you can write on this with whiteboard markers. The museum, which was put up some years ago, I don't know what year it was actually, right, I don't know what year it actually was put in place. But sadly, very few students had the experience of the museum, and some of them didn't even know it existed. So we needed another space for another STEAM lab, and the idea was born to have it right there in the midst of the history and the legacy of the school. Because what's going to happen, while the boys are in class, they are going to look around, and their eyes are going to catch a little taste of the history, the rich history that Jamaica College has. And inevitably, every time they go to class in there, they're going to look at another piece, look at another piece, and maybe want to go back and see all that they can. So this is a way to make sure that it's not just in a room, but it's going to be seen. And inside that same room, we are going to have a 3D printer. It is actually on the wall. It's not clear yet, but it's here. It's in Jamaica. The 3D printer and the actual um, consumables, they are here. The chairs that you're sitting on were specially designed for us. And we actually put it to the test of durability. We gave it to some boys and said, break it. <laughs> and they tried everything. Some of them could barely move it because of the, the heaviness of it. And that we said, all right. So we know these chairs are going to last for a long time. And we're not going to be trying to um, keep going back and asking for more funds for more chairs. So this is something, again, I don't want you to overlook. So in the museum, you see the, um, the, the actual table that the 3D printer is going to be on. And you're seeing where the tables, the chairs that I spoke about, the tables were actually a donation from one of the old boys um, association, the tables themselves. And the computers inside there, that were old boys um, association donation. So we're all, as I said, supporting the fueling of this journey. The audiovisual room. So this was me in 2019, speaking to Joe about the vision and the need for an audiovisual room, primarily for the teachers to actually come to a space where they could practice, be trained, be trained in not just STEAM, but whatever it is that would help their toolbox. So when they go into a classroom that they are going to be engaging, you don't want them practicing in front of the students. And that was a concern that teachers had of equipment that had come to the school in prior years that they did not know how to use it and they didn't want to come and take it to the room and they fumble in front of the boys. So we have a space where we can train them properly, they can go and practice and they can build their confidence to go into the classroom and actually use the products. So we're no longer going to have any products that are going to have dust on them in a couple of months or years. And I know that is one of um, Mr. Robinson's pet peeves. Is that, why is this sitting here? Why is this not being used? <laughs> okay. So we're making sure that they are confident in using these products. The AV room will be used also for small meetings, especially with the social um, distancing. It's used for international um, training, online training, because in there we have a smart board, we have um, the projector mounted, we have a large whiteboard. We're actually right now filming cla math classes so that we, in, um, in modules so that we can actually share with the students. That's going on right now inside of the AV room. So it, and the school challenge quiz team use it for their practice sessions and their matches. So it is already, already in use. All right, and I'm just telling you, it's been appreciated. And you can see where we're coming from to where we are now, ta-da.
And we also have, down on the Carlton Alexander block, we have an AutoCAD lab. That was another need that came out very urgently when we heard that the syllabus was being changed at CSEC level, that the boys would be using AutoCAD for their exams, so they need to start using it in the classes. So we actually attacked that issue in two ways under the STEAM infusion, and that's one, to have a bring your own device room where we actually got computer, we got laptops from Dr. Tate, Dr. Tate, and we loaded AutoCAD on it. And so the students who have devices were able to bring theirs, and those who don't, we were able to give them devices to use in the bring your own device room. It was uh, upgraded with electricals and also access point for internet stability. The lab, our desktops, the desktops were donated by the Jamaica Old Boys Association. The actual design of the table and the chairs were done by an old boy, that's Roger Chang. Uh, that was one of the last projects we signed off on um, before he passed. Um, so rest in peace. Okay. <laughs> You'll see a large, um, a large printer there, which they can do blueprints uh, when they do their, their TD work on the AutoCAD. The library is also upgraded, and we want to start to make the boys think more about electronic information rather than going books away. We're kind of rolling out the books and bringing in more electronics. So there, they have Chromebooks available to them when they go to the library. And we have set up some desktops and we have actually put some high-end um, programs on some of them so that those students who are doing animation, gaming, design, digital media, and AutoCAD can go to the library if they don't have a device for themselves and do their practice and do their sessions. They can do online classes in there also on the Chromebooks. We have increased our surveillance, where well, we are making sure that we are watching all the areas that have been in, uh, infused with steam, and we also have increased our network. We have put fiber across the school. We've increased the bandwidth. It's not, yeah, it's not totally, I mean, adequate for everybody to come in and put on every device, but it is much better than what we had before. So it's a step forward. There are also uh, kits that we have gotten from Pitsco, and also have um, expeditions that the students can do online where they get to infuse all the subjects, science, the technology, the engineering, the mathematics, and the arts, or they can get to actually um, build a robot, program the robot, they can use small drones. There are a lot of different tools that we have gotten that they can actually make the class more engaging. We have retrofitted, we have upgraded classrooms, and one of them, we have actually retrofitted to become a mini theater. And the mini theater actually has the ability to bring in, again, all subjects, because every subject can have role play. So they can come in and dramatize whatever it is that they're learning. Geography can come in and speak about the weather, for example, and dramatize it and have other students remember a skit that was done. The, um, the foreign language, modern languages can do something in French or Spanish and, and expose it to the other. And we have also thought of having um, talent, um, we actually sent out um, messages to the students that we want to have like jam sessions, have music and bands and stuff, but just in small quantities per week and, and stream it so that other persons can see as we're developing their, their skills in that area, the performing arts skill. Showing the skills. <laughs> All right, we have green screen panels, and um, we can actually record and in post. But I'm not sure if everybody knows. But in post, you can be quite dramatic with what you can put on on the on the green. So I just show an example of this this clip here, showing that this little boy is on his crib, but he's over a. Uh, a place that he could fall off. Obviously, the green screen was there, and that was placed afterwards. 
So can you imagine how far it can go for the boys' imagination to put anything on the green screen and have any class um, brought alive? The other upgraded classrooms, 6B, so we have in the sixth form block, we have upper and lower maths rooms where you are walking and you feel maths and see how maths applies to life. The modern language room, again, how fr uh, French and Spanish and other languages can help you as you go along. So that room is also, when you walk in it, you feel the modern languages. The teacher's conference room is primarily used by the teachers for small meetings, but the English department also uses it for classes. Six formers also use it for classes. So they are also feeling this. Inside of the upgraded rooms, we have smart TVs, sound at four corners, access point for internet um, stability. The TVET, the auto mechanics and engineering department, has also felt the infusion. So we have invested in the multimedia projector, mounted screen, uh, instructor's laptop, a uh, used motor, tools, used working car, um, tire changer, automatic scooter, and, and a car lift. So they, when the boys actually pull down and put the car back together, it's going to drive off. That must be impactful. And remember, all of the subjects, the physics, the chemistry, the English, the maths, the POB, all of these subjects can be brought alive through this department, automatically. At the beginning of our discussions in 2019, these were the projects that we decided that we would actually move forward on. And they, all of them are completed except, they all, as I said, there's some things on the wharf. So let's say they're completed, although they're on the wharf. And they upgrade the school team initiatives. There are a few more that need to be finalized. Everything else has been done. So we're ready to take off. Thank you.